Hey guys, my name is Kian Hushman and in today's video we're going to be checking out a really great metal tone that's absolutely 100% free. It's the Crunchman from Narlex. Let's have a look. So a little while back I did a demo of the Ninja amp from Narlex. Now that's just like a really like uber gen modern metal amp that's like no compromises. It sounds exactly what it says it is. And this one's a little bit different. The Crunchman plugin from Narlex is meant to replicate the BE100, the Freeman BE100. And to be honest, this sounds really, really good. It might not sound exactly the same, but for being free, it's, it's really nice. When you pair that with free IRs from ML Sound Lab, it sounds really, really nice, which you'll hear in a moment with the demo song. So when you pair the actual price of a Freeman BE100 plus the IR, which was a 4x12 recto, plus the mics that you had to mic it with to get the tone into the computer. I know it doesn't really work like that, but even if it sounded half as good, that would still be around $2,500 worth of tone, if that makes sense. So how would this sound with the mindset that it's 100% free? When I say free, I mean you can literally download everything I'm using, I'll leave the links in the description, put it through a door, and then just play your heart out. As always, if you guys like this video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you want to see more of this stuff, definitely subscribe. If you guys want the tabs, the stems, the unprocessed DIs and drum tracks, as well as little things like tone presets and stuff like that to support the channel, definitely check out the Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. So now, how does this 100% free modern metal tone stand out in the mix? So here it is, the Narlex Crunchman. Now if you've watched this channel before, you've probably seen me do a video on the Narlex Ninja, which is very, very modern, very in your face, a lot of high gain. Whereas this one's a little bit more versatile, you can flick it on the BE channel instead of the Hairy Brown Eye channel, kind of get crunchier tones, and if you dial the gain all the way back, you can get nice clean tones as well. But for the purposes of today's video, we're just going to be looking at a high gain modern metal tone. Just a little bit of background on how to get all this stuff running, I noticed that on the Narlex Ninja amp, video I got a lot of comments and a lot of questions on Instagram DM and stuff like that on how to actually get this stuff running. For some people watching that might just seem like the easiest thing ever but for some people who haven't done any of this stuff in like the audio production stuff like doors or like plugins or anything like that it might be a little bit daunting. So just to go through a little bit of background on how to get all this stuff running all these things like the G-Gate and the Overdrive plugin and the Crunchman and like the IR loaders and stuff, they're all called plugins. And the way you run plugins is you run it through a digital audio workstation, which is a door. Programs like FL Studio, like I'm using right now, Cubase, uh, Reaper's a really good one if you're into this stuff, uh, if you wanna get started with it. Reaper has a free 60 day evaluation period, I'm pretty sure, and it's really cheap to buy. So if you wanna get into this stuff, definitely check out Reaper. But basically, once you have a digital audio workstation like FL Studio or Reaper or Cubase installed and running, within that program, there'll be a plugin database. Now, when you go into that plugin database, you can add search directories onto your computer to look for folders that have plugins in them. And then when you download all of these plugins that I'll leave links for in the description, um, you extract them to a folder and then in your plugin database within your door, you search for that folder and then it will pop up in your door with all the plugins that you can choose in your mixer track. So now with all that introductory stuff out the way, let's go through all the plugins in order so you can achieve a tone like this. <laughs> So the first plugin in the chain is G-Gate. Now G-Gate is a free gate plugin. I've used it in many other videos before. Um, at the moment I have the attack and fade all the way off, which basically means that I really want this to be super, super tight. Um, threshold is at negative 49 dB at the moment. However, don't copy this exactly because your gear running into your interface and stuff like that, the actual input signal of your guitar might be hotter or it might be quieter. So you kind of want to play around with that threshold until you see fit. 
For example, if I had it all the way off around negative 100, you still get that noise coming through. Um, but if you turn it at like negative 16, it just gets way too choppy. So having it at around negative 49 where it was before, I felt like it was a really good spot. Next in the chain is the TSC 808 version 2. Now in my opinion, this is a really, really good emulation of an 808 type overdrive and I've used it in many other videos before. The settings of this are pretty typical, like drive all the way off, volume sitting at somewhere around nine, and I usually have the tone somewhere up here, but I feel like for this one, um, having it down just a little bit, like the Crunchman was a really bright amp, and um, for my ears personally, I liked having it around somewhere just over halfway. However, if your guitar is a little bit darker, like if your pickups are a little bit muddier or something like that, you might want to dial it up a little bit more. Or if your guitar is really bright, you could dial it back a little bit. It all depends on your gear, but for me and my gear and my playing, I felt like somewhere just over halfway was really nice. <laughs> And then onto the main star of the show, the Crunchman. Now, you might notice that there's no cab section on the Crunchman, which means that we have to use IR loaders to load up cabinet impulses later. But basically, when you have no impulse responses and it's just the Crunchman, it sounds really, really bad. And that's obviously because technically this amp head is not connected to a cabinet yet. So going through the actual settings, now as you can see there's a switch here for HBE and BE. Um, HBE stands for hairy brown eye and BE just stands for brown eye. Um, the BE channel is a little bit less gain, um, a little bit crunchier and you can get some nice clean tones out of it if you drive the gain all the way down. However, for the purposes of this video, like I said before, we're just going to be looking at the HBE channel, the hairy brown eye channel, which adds another gain stage and makes it sound really nice and saturated. As opposed to the brown eye channel, which sounds like this. The gain's at four, which might seem a little bit low, but I dialed this in for the riff that you heard in the demo song where it was really, really noty. <laughs> I wanted all those notes to cut through in the mix, so dialing the game back a little bit just to accentuate your playing goes a really long way, especially when you have double track guitars, like you don't have to have the gain cranking, like if you were playing just by yourself, you might have it up somewhere around here. So it seems a little bit more fuller, but when you're tracking and when you're doing it with two guitars, pan left and right, um, having it around four is more than enough. The fat switch I've kept off, but the CFF switch, to be honest, I have no idea what it stands for, but I've kept it on because I just liked the way it sounded when it was on, and I didn't question it. The bass knob I put out somewhere around 5.6. Now this is a little bit higher than I usually dial bass knobs, but I feel like for this instance it needed it a bit just to fatten up the tone. And you might ask why I didn't just engage the fat switch. Um, I like the EQ curve of the bass knob a little bit more. I don't know what the fat switch was doing, but I just didn't rate it that much. So I just figured that dialing the bass up a little bit more sounded better. The mids, treble and presence knob are all sitting at somewhere between 4.3 and 4.5ish. So the mids knob is 4.4, the treble is 4.3, and the presence is 4.5. Um, to be honest, the treble and presence knob I usually have over 5 on amp sims, but for some reason this was like really, really ice picky, so dialing it back just a little bit went a long way. Moving on to possibly the most influential knob on the whole amp is the power amp knob. Now what this knob does is if you have it cranked at all the way at 10, it will sound really flubby, really nice and warm and saturated. If you put it where I had it at around 3, it will dry it out a little bit, kind of get a little bit more articulate, accentuate your playing a little bit more, which is really, really helpful when you're going for these modern metal type of tones, playing these modern metal type of riffs. As opposed to this. I like having it at around three. The stereo switch is off, the volume knob is dead straight, I haven't touched it, and this is what it sounds like. So straight after the Crunchman, we have Ignite NAT-IR. Now NAT-IR is an impulse response loader, and you might notice that there's two instances of NAT-IR. The first one is for impedance curves, and the second one is for the impulse response, which is the actual cap. 
So these impedance curves here, the 5150 V1, V2, and the Mesa impedance curve, these can be downloaded from the Nalex website. So once you've downloaded them and put them in a folder on your computer, you then click this little folder icon here and it will take you to where you can find them and use them. However, because NatIR is like a dual cab processor, just to have one instance of like an impulse response or an impedance curve running, the balance is all the way to the left um, and then I've soloed it out. So it's getting nothing from this right side here. Like these just come stock with the plugin, but it's not taking anything from them because this is soloed out and the balance is all the way to the left. Um, gain, I've just kept at zero dB. I haven't touched that at all. And right now for this one, I've been using the 5150 V1. In the Nalex Ninja video, I was using the V2 um, because that amp was really, really high gain, really brittle, and this one was a little bit darker, the V2. Um, so for example, when I load up the V2, this is what it sounds like. Compared to the V1 that I used. Which is a little bit more brighter. Um, again, like I mentioned before, the Nalex Ninja amp that I did previously was a little bit of a brighter amp, which is why I used that V2 impedance curve because it was a little bit darker just to mediate the brightness of the amp. Whereas this one, it's the opposite. The amp isn't that bright. Um, so by using this impedance curve here, um, it kind of brightens it up a little bit. As for the controls down here, I haven't touched a single one apart from low pass, which I usually put at 15K um, just to get rid of that really high end information. So once you have your impedance curve set up, then you load up another instance of NetIR and use it for your impulse response, which is the actual cab. The actual IR that we've got loaded at the moment is the ML Sound Lab's best IR in the world, which if you've watched this channel before, you probably noticed that I use this one a lot because it is really, really good and 100% free. Pretty sure it's a cab snapshot of a 4x12 recto, and it just sounds really good with anything you throw at it, like rock or metal or pop or anything. Like It's just a really good all-round IR. As for all the settings, like I mentioned before, within the actual plugin, balance is set to 100% left, so it gets none of this stuff over here. I've soloed out the left channel, so it definitely gets none of that stuff over there. I'm just taking a lot of precautions. And then the controls on the bottom are a little bit different. So this time I've put the resonance up to like 30%, 29%, and then the low pass I've put at 12K instead of 15, just to get rid of more high end information. This low pass, I'll just give a quick demo of what it actually does. So when it's all the way off, <laughs> And then you start adding it in. Kind of dulls out your tone a little bit if you have it that high, but I like having it at around 12K, like around here, as opposed to completely open, which gets a little bit too brittle for my liking. Having it at 12K is like just enough. And that's it, that's the whole tone top to bottom. So these five plugins here, the gate, the overdrive, the actual crunch man, and then just two instances of this NAT IR, one for the impedance curve, one for the impulse response. Once you have that all set up, that's the whole tone. Taking a step back and realizing that this is 100% free is just absolutely mind boggling because yes, it might not be the easiest thing ever that you have to have a separate gate and a separate overdrive and the amp head is separate and then you have to have all these IRs and stuff like that. But really it's not that hard to set up. Like once you have it all done, it's pretty simple. But the fact that you can load this up in like five minutes, it's 100% free and sounds this good is absolutely stupid. <laughs> probably a little bit late to mention this now for everyone that's already pissed off and clicked off the video but I'm not getting paid to say any of this right now like I have no incentive or obligation to tell you that this is good this is my honest thoughts and opinions on this I got a really usable tone out of it so I'm showing you the last video that I did on the Nalex Ninja is my most popular YouTube video that has over 100,000 views at the moment, which by the way, thank you, that's absolutely amazing. But I should probably mention that if you wanna pay for this stuff, like if you feel like it's really good and you really enjoy it and you wanna give back, you can donate on the website. So if you really like the way it sounds and it's really helped you out and you think it's too good to be free, you can donate, that is an option. But yeah, again, all the download links for this stuff will be in the description so you can download it yourself, try it out yourself. Let me know how it goes and you'll be riffing like this in no time.
So if you're still here, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I know it's a little bit of a long one. If you guys liked the video at any time, please feel free to leave a like and a comment on anything you saw or heard. And if you want to see more of this stuff like gear reviews, plug-in demos, all that good stuff, definitely subscribe because I love making videos like these. Again, if you guys want tabs, audio stems, unprocessed DIs and drum tracks with the demo songs, as well as little snippets like tone presets and stuff like that, definitely think about supporting me on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. Massive thanks to all my Patreons who support me and what I do. Without you guys, I would not be making this video right now. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao.